if I may, my work is directly to black people. I spend 99% of my time dealing with us to help us reform our minds and spirit that we may do for ourselves. However, when you live in a society like this, and we know that in order to effect a solution to a problem between black and white, then there's going to have to be some meaningful dialogue between black and white in order to effect a solution. The young lady said she's afraid of violence. And isn't it sad that we who have been the victims of so much violence, now whites fear violence from us. We do not have a history of killing white people. White people have a history of killing us. See, and what, and what you fear, may I say this, sir? What you fear, and it's a deep guilt thing, that white folks suffer, you are afraid that if we ever come to power, we will do to you and your fathers what you and your people have done to us. And I think you are judging us by the state of your own mind, and that is not necessarily the mind of black people. Um, I'm with you in that you're talking about wanting to have meaningful dialogue, and that's a problem, you know, right away, I don't know what's going to make whites happy, for Pete's sake. You know, you're talking about trying to find a solution to your problem. You're trying hard to do that. And we're tuning you right out. We're arguing with you. We're not agreeing with anything. We're not trying to give you a chance. For Pete's sake, you know, what do we want? Yeah. 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 Um, Mr. Farcon. There's a situation now where one in four black males are in prison or in jail or in some type of probation situation, okay? When I look around, even myself being a black reporter, okay, and they talk about racism of a black and white person go to the job, a black person is going to get the job. I never find that out. And we're in New York City with a black mayor, and I, 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 I still haven't seen it. And when I see Minister Farrakhan, not only do the brothers enlighten me, but he gives me hope to not give up, not go get a pistol and stick somebody up, okay? So when I see you, not only are you the light and the hope, but I think, white America, you need to listen. And please don't harm this brother, because we love him. Uh, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Getting back to what she said, what exactly do we have a problem with? Before you made a statement, you said that I think that, well, not I, you said that white people think that you are inferior to us. I don't believe that. I'm part of the youth of America. I am not prejudiced. I feel more prejudiced right now than I've ever felt. What? Not against black, I am not prejudiced against black people. Some of my best friends are black people. <laughs> I am, what's, what's the problem with that? Yeah. yeah. You let him speak, let me speak. Yeah. You wanted to speak to this young woman? No. I I, no, I don't want to speak. Uh, I, uh, uh, you, who wants to talk to her? Yes. No. yes. What do you What do you mean? You feel more prejudiced right now? Because the way he's saying. Because me. what? What he's saying right now. I mean, I feel that you are prejudiced towards white people. Yeah. 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 Okay. But excuse me. Excuse me. I think it's like he said. It might be a fear or misunderstanding that you have. Because what fear has he put, or what has he actually said here today that makes you feel prejudiced? I think that he said, that, he said that we think that they're inferior. I think it's partly part of your own complex that you have to get over because I don't feel you're inferior. I have nothing against black people. Yes. Yes. Let me answer her. This, this, this is the, excuse me, excuse me, this is the situation. Every young white adult says, I have not done this to white black people. I have not done that to black people. But your forefathers are the ones who have set us in the situation we are in. Now, what I'm saying is this. When Nat Turner stood up, you all rejected him. You killed him. When Marcus Garvey stood up, you all rejected him, enslaved him. He died a broken heart. Now, what I'm saying is this. Your fathers have put us in the condition we are in, and today you are profiting from what your forefathers have done. Now, now, my grandchildren are going to be raised, and your children are going to to say to them, do it. They have not done to them because you are the ones who have, you are the ones who are going to do to my grandchildren what they're going, going to experience if the situation continues. Now, what I'm saying is this. When we talk about America falling, what we are saying is this. 
If you all want to control America, then we must have a land base that we control. You all cannot continue printing the dollar bill and then expect us to abide by your rules when you do not want to give us jobs. Therefore, I'm saying that we have now got to come into negotiations and Minister Farrakhan is the man to listen to. It, it, becomes, it becomes apparent more and more as we listen to each other and try to talk to each other that we don't perceive reality the same. And as we're talking about either reconciling differences or separating, it becomes clear that if two people are looking at the same thing and perceiving it so differently, then the two people are operating under a different stimulus. And so when the young lady says, I am prejudiced, to be prejudiced means to judge before the fact. After 400 years of living and experiencing, we're not prejudiced. We are looking at the reality of what we have suffered and continue to suffer. Are you there? Yeah. Are you there, caller? Yes. Thank you for waiting. I'm sorry it took us a while to get you, but go ahead. I know you'll be brief. Um, I'm a white American born into poverty, and I overcame it. You know, the opportunities are here in America, and why can't we just start now? We hear all this violence. Why can't we just talk in a positive way and go forward instead of remembering all these things that are in the past that are, that are negative. They were not good for black, not good for uh, white people. According, according. Uh, yes, Minister Farrakhan can't comment. According to the uh, State of Black America by the Urban League, if we started right now, they said, we could never close the gap to black poverty and white poverty. She said, let us start right now. Let's forget the past. Notice this. When Jewish people remember the Holocaust and want the world to remember the Holocaust. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you want the world to remember? Because if the world does not remember, it is likely to repeat itself. And Jewish persons who suffered from the Holocaust want the world to remember this because the world turned its back while Jews were put in ovens. I, as a black person, want my people to remember what we have suffered and what we continue to suffer so that we will say like the Jews, never again. Never again. Okay, I've, I've been listening in this corner right here, and I've heard a whole lot of negative things from the white people here. When you are trying to explain yourself, the white people don't want to hear you explain yourself. They drown you out. They start already trying to drown you out and talk over you. There's a certain amount of white arrogance here, and they don't want to listen to what black people are saying. They don't understand because they don't want to understand. I've heard a woman here say, go back to Africa. Somebody said, we have a black yeah. holiday. What does that mean? So yeah. what? What does that mean? He did not say that. He said, if we have a choice. What some of us can go and some of us yeah. can stay. Just remember, but there's no understanding just in here. People to, are just trying to, to those, talk. To those arrogant persons. You know, when you tell us, go back, please remember where you came from. And when you, when you want to relegate somebody to a specific place, just remember what your origin is in this world. Please, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I want you to understand that you, wherever you are on the earth, you're not a native anywhere. You came there and took it from the native people who are there. So please don't talk about going back, because if others talk to you about that, where would you go?